Good morning, friends, wherever you are. I would love to welcome you to Daily Devotions by Pastor Michael Nguaro. Stay tuned for an exciting episode filled with inspiration, motivation, and encouragement for the day. Join the pastor now as he shares the word. Good morning, friends. Welcome to our morning devotion. My name is Michael Rugube Nguaru. What a pleasure it is to have you around. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, I want to thank you for this day. Thank you for life. Thank you for the many things that you provide us in life. And also, Lord, believe and pray that you be with us right through the whole day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Friends, we are continuing with our theme, More About Jesus. And basically, under this theme, we are looking at a a topic that I've chosen to entitle, He Came and He is Still Here. And for that, I'd like you to join me as I go to John chapter 1, verse is 10 to 13, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And please, I would like you to know that all the texts that I'll be reading will be coming from the very same version. So join me, friends, as we go to John chapter 1, verse is 10 through 13, and I read in your hearing. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of men, but of God and of God. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Friends, there are issues here that I think are very important for us to look into as far as this reading is concerned and as far as this devotion is concerned. Let us reflect on what we have read from verses 10 through 13. We have a situation where the owner of this world comes around and when he is dwelling with us and he is in our company but we fail to realize that he is the owner of this this world. I just want, I don't know how much you know about this, but I'd like to share this with you, the fact that sometimes we fail to know something because it is hard to understand. But sometimes we fail to know something because we choose not to want to know. And this is the implied version that I see in verse is 10 that when Jesus came around here on this planet, we chose not to want to know. And as a result, uh, you have this rejection that comes with, he came to his own and his own did not receive him. How do you receive a person that you don't want to even know about? How do you receive someone that you do not seem to want to, to understand? So this is the critical problem that we have um, in this world. And this is not just a Judean problem that happened thousands of years ago, but the problem is still even here today where we have people who have simply told their minds they have nothing to do with God, they have nothing to do with Jesus, they don't want to know anything. This is the right that we as human beings, as as intellectual people and as rational people um, have the right to believe and the right not to, to believe. And this is why when you look into this particular passage, you actually see that there are two groups of people. You have those that 
rejected Jesus and we have those that accepted Jesus and similarly you have those that receive Jesus Christ and you have those that reject Jesus Christ. I want us to um, appreciate one thing when it says he came to his own and his own did not receive him. You'll understand friends from our previous devotion that Jesus Christ is 100% God and he is 100% human. He did not come down from heaven with the humanity already clad on him. He got that humanity from Mary when he was born as a little boy and grew among us. So this human flesh, the human body, belongs to a genealogy, a family tree that goes back up to Adam, all the way to David, all the way to Judah, and all the way to Abraham, and then to, to Adam himself. So when Jesus is being rejected by his own, in a primary sense, the Jews were not ready to receive their own. He came, he could not even find a place to be born from and yet be born in a manger. And some ordinary shepherds were the ones to come and welcome him. Ordinary shepherds who were not known in society. And not only that, foreign nationals, people coming from another, another, another part of the world, the Magi, the wise men from the East who are not Jews, were the ones who came and said, we have come to see him born king of the Jews. And the Herod did not know anything about that. The priests and the high priests included, they did not know anything about, about that. But these are the people who had all the prophecies about the coming of the Messiah, including where he was going to be born, everything. They had all the prophecies, but when he arrived, they were not there to, to receive him. And I like another point where there is a lot of hope um, as far as the mission of the Lord Jesus Christ is concerned. And the hope is, even though there are some people who will reject him or who rejected him, there are still people on planet Earth. I don't know how they do it and I don't know how it works that they end up having a mind that is willing to understand more willing to learn more about this person called Jesus Christ and to receive him in their personal lives. And this is what you see, and this is why the Bible says, uh, to them that received him, he gave them the power and the right to become God's children, not according to the will of men, but according to the will of God. We are going to be looking into that as we go deeper into our devotional study. But suffice to say, Friends, in this world, there are two classes of people. Those who accept Jesus, who receive Jesus, and those who do not. So when you find yourself you are in heaven, or you find yourself you are lost and you are in hell, you do not blame that on God. Because God has given you the free will choice to choose to believe or not to believe. It is in your prerogative as a human being, as a rational, free moral agent to choose to believe in something or not to believe in something. But what I like about the Lord Jesus Christ, basically, is that He came. He came. He came, friends. Whether people were going to refuse Him, He came. Whether people are going to reject him, he can. Whether people are going to accept him and believe in him, he can. He did his part. You know, when you read uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verses 19, and listen to what it says, friends, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. God had to take the initiative to save you and to save me. Yet to travel that whole distance from heaven down here in search of me and in search of you. None of us took the initiative to look for God. It is God and it has always been God handing for his children. 
No wonder he came down and clad in human flesh so that he can come the closest he can ever be to us just in search of you and in search of me. Now it remains with you whether you want to know him, to understand him, or whether you have nothing to do about him at all. That is the decision Jesus has left to you, but otherwise he is available. He can. And you may actually ask and say, but Pastor Nguaru, you say he is still around. He is here. What do you mean about that? Let's go to um, Revelation chapter 3 and verses 20. And here is what it says, friends. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and open the door, I'll come into him and dine with him and he with me. It is, it, this text is not saying Jesus is in heaven or to some other planet. He is right where you are, outside your heart. If he has not gotten in yet, he is standing outside in the cold. It's raining there. He's, he's still hanging in there. There are stormy winds. He's still, he's still out there. He can. What are you going to do about him standing outside the door of your heart and wanting to be in your life? Wanting to be in your experiences and wanting, wanting you to be a part of God's family and giving you the right and the passage to, to God's family. What are you going to do about that? Are you going to reject him? Are you going to accept him? I am praying for you this morning that on daily basis, it's not something that you do once and, and for all, on daily basis, we need to receive Jesus Christ in our lives and making sure he remains in your life. I don't know. Somehow I've got the confidence that you want to know more about Jesus and that you want to let him in. Please, friends, why don't you receive him? Let those who reject, reject. But as for you, Jesus says, I want to be a part of your life. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, I want to thank you this day. I want to thank you, Lord, for your grace. Thank you for your love. Thank you for taking the initiative to come into our lives. Thank you for wanting to save us, Lord. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but will have everlasting life. Here we are, Lord. We are opening our hearts, including my friend who is listening. May you enter into our wells and be our God and give us the passage and the right to be God's children. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. I hope you were all blessed by today's message. For your support to this much-needed ministry, I urge you to follow us on YouTube, like, share, and subscribe for more devotionals like this. May the good Lord spend this whole day with you.